Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the uh, changes for the next update for random flow and creative flow and also some news about uh, panel cutter. So let's start with random flow. So one of the changes is that all of the random seed parameters are now um, changed to or their minimum is now changed to minus 10,000 instead of just one and maximum is 10,000 so for example here in dipped said dipped said seed you can see that minimum is minus 10,000 and maximum is 10,000 so you you get a lot more range by just uh, sliding the uh, seed parameter and that is true for over all of the seed parameters uh, for all of the random operators and next up is the genodes so the extract mesh operator from both random flow and creative flow can now extract geometry from the genode feature in uh, random flow and also in your own genode setup uh, of course this has to be in um uh this this is in terms of geometry you can extract geometry so this is the geonode result this is the virtual result of the geonode modifier and when we go to extras and mesh extract faces you can see that it will now correctly extract from the surface of the geonode so with random flow, this is used to create proxy meshes for randomization. After you have extracted the mesh and created the randomization from this, then you can choose to delete this. So for example, I am, I am now settled with the design of the geonode. I want to add uh, pipes to this. And I extract the faces and then use the faces to add the pipes, for example, like that. And then I delete the uh, proxy mesh okay and this is also true for creative flow and we have extract faces so extract faces in creative flow is used to create uh, base meshes by means of our extraction okay Here you go so this can be used to um, this can be used as a base mesh or as a, a boolean mesh. Next up is the random animation. Uh, strangely, for Blender four point four, and this also affects affects other add-ons like Blender uh, Camera Shaker five. It adds shakes to your camera, so it also has a bug. There's a, I think it's not the fault of the add-ons, but I think someone just um, because of the changes that has come with uh, the new version of Blender. I think somebody has done something to the code and the old code, which is still there for animation, but it doesn't work correctly. It does work if you add something on top of that, which uh, makes it redundant, but it does make it work. So, random animation doesn't work for 4.4, so it's going to be fixed in the coming update. So, you will have this. And also, um, uh, random panels. Random panels will have a new preset called uh, Floater Mesh Indent. I think Floater Mesh Inner is already at the stores. So let me just get rid of the uh, Gmail. So uh, random panels, uh, Floater Mesh Inner. This creates those lines or panel cuts that is separate from the source mesh and activates the Floater Mesh uh, toggle, which makes it um, kind of like 
part of the object underneath by toggling off certain cycles per uh, visibility toggles which are the um, uh, everything here so if we select the object so everything here except for the camera so it doesn't contribute shadows glossy which doesn't reflect off from the surface underneath and this makes it kind of like a part of the mesh or the cube for this example and this is of course a separate object and this is good for especially for uh, curved or organic surfaces which uh, you don't want to touch the um, topology and you don't have enough time to create like textures so you just want really something really fast something uh, a detail that's something uh, fast uh, panel cut detail so you can use this and the opposite of this this is using i think this is using um, i think that's inner and the, uh, the other one here is i think outer so what this does is instead of uh, keeping the panel cut faces it keeps the top faces from the um, uh, panel island so you have this so you now have indent detail So you, you, you see that the face is going to look like it's uh, uh, embossed. Yeah. Is it embossed or debossed? So it, it kind of looks like it's going towards the mesh. So this is what it looks like inside. And this, of course, from this angle, it betrays the, uh, the crack. But once you see it from this angle, you can see that it's rather convincing so it does the same thing activates the floater mesh and disables the uh, toggles here in the invisibility except for the camera and you can do a bunch of stuff I think I might okay so let's do 32 if you want to keep if you want to keep the smaller islands instead, uh, I think, yeah. So you need to switch this on to keep the smaller islands. There we go. And toggle this off to keep these larger islands instead. Then you have, you can change the um, solvers here. So this is a really quick way of uh, creating this kind of detail on especially on relaxed surfaces so what you're going to end up doing the doing is uh, for example uh, let's just mirror this it's a basic uh, workflow okay oops or mirror sorry. what the uh, that was strange. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna do it manually. So, for example, let's let, let's just get rid of the sharp and use what is smooth. So, for example, um. We'll get the uh, additional topology okay so we have like so for example we have uh, bc detail on this part like a lot of details so, uh, just just an example okay so for example we have something like that I think we can go a little more and I'm going to reduce the not that shading bevel node and reduce the effect of this. There we go. 
So for example, we have something like that, that uh, detailed, uh, detailed area here, and we have uh, relaxed areas here. Okay, so, but you need to like, uh, create like dispersed detail in these areas. Then you can use either uh, Flutter Mesh Inner or Flutter Mesh Indent. So let's use both, but keep the topology relaxed and not too much. Let's just play around with the, there we go. And for, for the um, geometry that you don't want, you can just go in and delete those. So for example, this one here and this one here. So we'll, we'll, we're only left with this uh, detail on the sides. And then what we can do next is add uh, smatterings of the plotter mesh indent to increase the resolution. And we have that. So the size of this, if you are using this on smaller objects, you have you need to, for example, this one here, you need to modify the thickness and the depth. Right here, it might be too big for for the for the size of the uh, object that you are modeling, or too small. So you need to adjust the resulting thickness, depth, and even margin. Margin might be too high. It's just too small for the object that you're using. So just be aware of that. And we're going to reduce the number by reducing the panel amount and play around with the seed value. So something like this. And we have this. So, and again, uh, once you've settled with the pattern and you have some, most of the patterns you like, but some you don't like, you can just go in in edit mode and basically select the um, objects. Uh, let's go to you. This, this is the real side. We see select the geometry that you don't want in the, there you go. So that's the advantage of a uh, destructive, uh, the destructive side of uh, random flow that you can access the geometry afterwards and you're not stuck with full procedural uh, result. It's part procedural and part destructive, which is a much faster workflow for iteration in my mind uh, instead of just full procedural. Okay, something like that. So, and to achieve this, um, a new thing, a new parameter is also added to run panels and we have the offset. So basically offset is the one that will make your uh, panel islands rise up and down. There you go. Okay. So you might need to when you when the update is passed, you might need to reinstall the presets, or just if you know your way around the folder system, you can just copy the uh, exact uh, random panels uh, py file a uh, preset file inside the operator folder in the presets. And you don't need to actually copy everything again to that. Just the new one. And also change, uh, there, uh, I haven't added it yet, but there will be a change for render loom extrude. And it will just be that without using any preset, the tree, this tree will be turned on by default. Uh, and you won't have to actually uh, use the preset to, for this to be turned on. So this avoids confusion for a new user, which might not be aware of the 
of how this works and haven't looked at the online documentation yet. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's about, I think that's about it. I think I haven't forgotten anything. Okay. So for uh, rent, uh, panel cutter, this will also reflect the changes made to the um, random to random flow and uh, this will be simplified right now it's creating all this so I think instead of inner and outer and inner thickness inner depth this will have the offset system like in random panels to make it simpler and the shortcut key for creating the effect the um, indent effect in Random panels, uh, yeah, random panels in random flow will be um, created as a preset instead to make it uh, more obvious than actually using the actually using a shortcut key. So right now it operates like you need to press, I think, control and then click on the operator and click on inset and you have this and basically the same effect that I've shown with the uh, random f uh, panels uh, flutter mesh in then so uh, in the next uh, in the up upcoming update of panel cutter you will have this two presets I think and also somebody requested uh, that the I think cut can make can be made using uh, edges with seams, so that's a request. So I think I might add, add, add that, add that as well. Uh, in bevel, in the in the bevel type as well as the inset type. So inset type right now only works for um, marked sharp marked sharp edges. And <clears throat> so in the next update the um, the bevel should also work the bevel right now only works with selected edges so there, there will be a new option to make it work for um, mark sharp edges and edges with seams in the selection uh, in the edge selection okay so yeah that is it, and uh, the updates will be coming soon. I, I just have to test out the spend a f uh, whole day testing out bugs, and then I will, of course, uh, upload it to the stores. Once I upload it to the stores, you will receive an email. There will be no direct upload link on the email. The, the email is just to remind you of the update, okay, to notify you of the update. Even if you don't receive the email and you see me post on my social media that I've updated the store at that particular time, then all you need to do after that is go to your store and to your product library and go to the particular product or add-on and um, download the free update. Okay, so that's it. And uh, updates will be coming soon. Um, again, subscribe, uh, like, comment, and share. And if you have any questions, just the comment section below. Thank you for watching and you have a nice day.